Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I sat in my tiny New York City apartment last Thursday morning and cried my eyes out, reading about the plea agreement that C.C. McDonald, a 23-year-old African-American um, transgender woman, took to avoid 40 years in prison. Last year, C.C. and a group of her friends were attacked. Racist and transphobic slurs were used during the attack. Instead of Cece and her friends ending up dead, which is so often the case, this time one of their attackers, Dean Smith, died instead. While defending herself, Cece suffered a laceration to her cheek, which punctured her salivary gland. Cece, who was merely defending herself from a racist and transphobic attack, Cece, who was merely standing her ground, was arrested and charged with second-degree murder. Her trial was supposed to start last week, but after a series of evidentiary rulings went against Cece, rulings which excluded evidence of her attacker's prior assault convictions, evidence of the swastika tattooed on his jet chest, Cece pled guilty. She survived the kind of violent attacks so many trans women of color don't, but has become a victim anyway of a criminal justice system which all too often assumes the worst about transgender women of color. <laughs> Last Thursday, before reading about Cece's plea, I also read about a case, um, I, um, I also read about the murder of Paige Clay in Chicago last month. Paige is an African-American transgender woman, and her killer is still at large. I read about Randy Martell, another African-American transgender woman who was shot and killed in Oakland, California, only a few days after Paige's death. I read about Markel Ty, yet another African-American transgender woman who was found dead in Arkansas back in March. News reports stated that she had a head wound and appeared to have been dragged by a car. I sat in my apartment in tears, reading about the injustice and brutality that so many girls who look like me experience every day. Now, I moved to New York over a decade ago with some big dreams. Some of them I've realized. I produced and started my own television show for VH1. I've acted in television shows on NBC and HBO. I've gone to act in independent films, one of which was in theaters all over the country earlier this year. Some people in my apartment building refer to me as the girl from TV. But I'm also a transgender woman of color who doesn't always pass as someone who's not transgender. Like Cece, Paige, Brandy, and Markal, this makes me a target. I've been kicked, harassed, discriminated against in healthcare. Me, the girl from TV, this proud New Yorker. I am well aware that just because I've starred in my own TV show and have acted in films, that that doesn't mean I'm immune to the fates that Cece, Paige, Brandy, and so many others have suffered. I live in a state where because the government has been unable to pass the Gender Expression Non-Discrimination Act, GENDA, into law, supports me being viewed as a second-class citizen, not as, deser as not deserving the same protections as anyone else simply because I am transgender. By not having laws in place that support the equality of transgender New Yorkers, our government sends the message that girls like me should be treated as second-class citizens, that our equality and access to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness doesn't matter. But this is not the will of the people. A recent poll of New York voters found that 78% support the passage of a bill like gender. That's nearly four out of five New Yorkers who support transgender equality.
despite the disproportionate amounts of discrimination transgender people experience, the tides are moving towards equality. Last month, the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission ruled that transgender people are covered under Title VII, which bans discrimination, employment discrimination, based on gender. Sixteen states and the District of Columbia have similar gender laws in place to protect its citizens. Even the Miss Universe organization recently ruled that they will no longer discriminate against transgender women, and we are now allowed to compete. <laughs> Yet New York State, a state that I love and call home, and have always believed should be at the forefront of human equality, has yet to pass gender into law. A recent study reported that a staggering 41% of transgender respondents had attempted suicide compared to 1.5% of the general population. 41%. This is in part because we live in a culture, in a state that doesn't value our lives. In turn, we don't value them. I'm one of those transgender people who has attempted suicide. As an adolescent growing up in Alabama, I felt that who I was at my core was damaged and wrong. Growing up religious, I thought I was going to hell. The work that I do in the media is in part to educate and create a sense of hope for girls like me and for anyone who might feel at their core that they're worthless. But changing hearts and minds in the media is only one part of the equation. Laws have to be in place, not only to protect all our citizens, but also to give a sense of hope to so many of us who feel there is none. It's time for our state senate to do its job and enact the will of the people they represent by passing the Gender Expression Non-Discrimination Act. And send the message that all New Yorkers should have equal protections under the law so that everyone can have the opportunity to live our American dreams. Thank you.